All righty, welcome back, everybody. The timeout. Um, me and the guys here, we're going to go over uh, the coaching carousel right now. Uh, it's basically in midseason form. We're seeing a lot of coaches being hired and fired, uh, you know, more than what we even have seen in the past season. So uh, we'll get into it. We'll go right into the NCA. A um, couple big, big faces, big names that we're seeing come back now, um, taking college coaching, head coaching jobs. A uh, few of them being A. Les Miles is the new head coach at the University of Kansas. Um, you know, Hugh Freeze, after everything that happened at Ole Miss, he's back coaching at the University of Liberty. Uh, Mac Brown, who, you know, he's he's older coach, um, old Texas coach. He's back at the University of North Carolina. Uh, Manny Diaz, who, uh, you know, I personally, that was kind of shady for me. Uh, Miami's defensive coordinator takes a Temple head coach job. Stays there for about two weeks, goes back and uh, takes over as Miami, Miami's head coach after um, the early signing period has closed. Uh, you know, I'll get into this a little bit more on, on my single podcast, Take a Time Out with Trev. Um, you know, getting into why I think coaches should be held at the same standard as transfers, student wise, you know, with dis- disciplinary actions, things like that. Uh, but Manny Diaz, new coach of Miami. Mike Loxley, who we seen last night in the national championship game, offense coordinator at Alabama, he has accepted the job at the University of Maryland to be the next head coach. And then the big one that's been causing a lot of news, uh, especially for us Michigan fans, is Ryan Day stepping in for recently retired Urban Meyer at Ohio State. Um, you know, he, he snagged a couple Michigan assistants here. Just with the- so, Dr. Pepper, Big Zai, you got any comments on uh, the college football coaching changes that we got going on? Yeah, I'll go first. Uh, you know, I think co- there's a couple good hires. Les Miles being the face of Kansas. I um, think that's just big for them to finally get somebody with a big name in there. Um, be interesting as defensive style against the pack or against the uh, Big 12's offense. Um, so we'll see if he can build what he had at LSU. Um the DS thing, uh, you know, I think is a little shady, but probably more on the institutional Miami than it is him, you know, because I think he wanted to be the head coach there and then he leaves and then all of a sudden, you know, Mark gets fired like that and then you bring him right back. So I understand it for him. You know, it sucks for the recruiting uh, side of it, but, you know, he did what was best for him. I mean, you'd have to be, I mean, I don't think anybody in the world would take Temple over Miami. So to take Miami over for T- Temple, I understand that. Um, Ryan did Ohio State be interesting, you know, in the footsteps of Urban Meyer. Um, you know, we haven't seen Ryan Day as a head coach. So, you know, my personal opinion is kind of that I thought maybe Ohio State could have went out and got better, but he, you know, he was in there. I think the players already like him, so they kind of got a head start there. Um, so we'll, we'll see. Uh, you know, stealing the Michigan assistance. Uh, you know, Michigan needed to make some changes, so I still got total faith in my boy Jimmy. Uh, the rest of the guys, you know, I, I'm curious to see Mac Brown in North Carolina. It seems like every year for the last like five years, North Carolina has uh, had suspensions or they've gotten in trouble with the NCA. So to get somebody in there that knows what they're doing, um, because I think they've had some talented guys, especially on the offensive side. Um, so kind of see if they can become a powerhouse in the ACC or just even become a contender. Um, but the rest of the guys like Hugh Freeze, I mean, I don't even think that dude should be coaching. Uh, you know, he's probably got more issues than, but you know, somebody's always going to take a chance through there and then. So, I mean, it'll be interesting. Uh, I think Les Miles is probably the guy to watch the most, uh, you know, and then Ryan Day just has a lot of pressure, you know, and it's not like you just have to fill Urban Meyer's footsteps. He's still there. Like, Urban Meyer is still going to be working on the campus, taking that stuff. So it's going to be really interesting how that works. Uh, you know, if he struggles, people are going to be like, hey, you know, we need Urban back. Um, so it's going to be really interesting to see how that works out. Yeah, for sure. Definitely agree on that. Dr. Pepper, you got any hot takes for the college fo- college coaching jobs at- Recently. Um, I'm giving. I'm gonna go a little more than less miles, but first, I'm the guys you listen. I'm gonna give two words, kind of describe what I think of it. What I think of the hires. Less miles, great hire. Mac Brown, too old. Manny Diaz, interesting hire. Interesting hire. Hugh Freeze, don't really care. Uh, one you forgot to mention. That's three words. Who cares? Said don't really care. Oh, my man. Don't. Okay, three words. All right, it'll be two to three words. My man. Okay. One you forgot to mention, Daniel Holgerson, the West Virginia coach going to Houston. Dude's crazy. And Maryland, who is that guy? I mean, 
Oh, last one, Ryan Nay, no comment. But uh, going into Les Miles, great hire. They they had to pay him a lot of money to get him there because Kansas has been baloney for about at least my whole lifetime, you know. And I'm 19 and a half years old. But uh, yeah, great hire. Uh, I wonder what he's gonna do if he's gonna be like LSU and pick up the you know grass and eat it, or what he's gonna do. I I I want to see what new tradition he starts at Kansas. And I think Kansas, you know, being in the Big 12, the defenses are always terrible anyway. So, get a good offense in there. They might make some moves. And uh, I don't know if they're ever, they're never going to win a Big 12, but I think he's going to put them on the map, you know, for the Big 12. And uh, I'm not going to say natty title, but something wild is going to happen. I think, turn it here first, gentlemen. I think they're going to win 10 games. I don't know when. They're just going to win 10 games in a season. And Kansas have won about one and a half games in the last 25 years. Dr. Pepper, your hot takes, man. I'm telling you, if some of the stuff you're saying actually comes true, you better play the lottery. Some of it, I mean. Wow. The Chargers are going to dominate. It's just that simple, buddy. I mean. And for you, for you not even the. If you just say, who is Mike Loxley? I mean, Alabama's old coordinator? Come on. Never Come heard on. of that guy. Another Michael. Another Michael, I mean. I'm telling you. All right. Well, we'll, we'll get rid of, uh, I think, Parker's full of the baloney tonight. So, we'll get right into the NFL uh, jobs. A couple of them got filled just today. Um, you know, some pretty recent news here. The thing that, you know, me and the timeout guys were kind of talking about before we even started recording here is that all the AFC jobs are still open. So we're seeing these NFC jobs fall off the board. And meanwhile, the AFC, every job is still wide open. Um, there's a couple that have, you know, we've heard rumors about their finalists, et cetera, but nothing's really been confirmed at this moment. So, but a couple of the NFC guys, uh, Matt LaFleur you know, was an offense coordinator for the Titans. He's coming over to be the new head coach of the Packers. Um, you know, I'll give, I'll give my take on this one first. Personally, not a huge fan of this. Um, I think the Packers could have did a lot better, especially with Aaron Rodgers. They're still a com- very competitive team for the upcoming years. Um, yeah, I don't know what the thinking was. You know, LaFleur, it's not like Tennessee's offense was very potent. I mean, they're the 27th best ranked offense coming off of this year. So the hire kind of confuses me a little bit. Uh, I, I mean, what do you guys think? Do you guys have any different opinions on that? I just, I don't get it really. I think the Packers kind of made a quick decision. And I think it it wasn't the the smartest decision, the best decision that they could have made. You guys have any comments on that? Everybody in the Green Bay Packers organization, uh, at the top from from GM up, should be fired. The, probably the uh, worst hire. I mean, you got Aaron Rodgers, who is a uh, you know a franchise guy. He's still probably got seven years of high level football, and you. Look at it, and they go out and hire a guy who, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I'd, I wouldn't even have been able to tell you where this dude coaches at. Um, I I don't think he's even ever been a head coach. And so you go out and you tell me you're going to get a, somebody that's never been a head coach when you probably have a top five quarterback. Um, so to get rid of Mike McCarthy like they did um, and to go out and hire this guy, it's terrible. And, you know, this isn't going to work out, um, and it's unfortunate now, I don't mind it because I'm not a huge Aaron Rodgers guy. It's his personality. I think he's a hell of a player. Um, but I think his personality, like, kind of, you know, I would say karma. You know, when you act like you're too good for everybody, what comes around goes around. But so that's my opinion on the Green Bay Packers. Like, every if I was the owner right now and I wasn't involved in those decisions, I'd probably come in and say, hey, that's not going to happen. We're firing everybody and we're starting over. Yeah, definitely, definitely agree. Dr. Pepper, what do you got on the Green Bay job? Um, personally, fellas, I gotta disagree with you two. For one reason. I love the hire, personally. Because my Detroit Lions are gonna continue to meet them. And they are gonna continue to be better than them. So, for, as a Packers fan standpoint and a Packers organization, I think it's a terrible hire, like you guys have said. But I love it being a Lions fan. I love it. Truly love it. Uh, hate the Green Bay Packers. I'll put it out there. Hate's a strong word, I know, but 
hate the Green Bay Packers. But yeah, I mean, like so I said, I never even, I couldn't even have told you he was a Titans offensive coordinator, you know, before like a week ago. Um, never knew where he coached beforehand, uh, the Titans. So, I mean, just with what Aaron Rodgers, you know, he basically, the whole unraveling was mainly because of him and Matt McCarthy. So, I mean, for him, a, a no-name, I'm just going to call him a no-name, co- uh, new head coach to come in and have to deal with Aaron Rodgers. Don't think it's going to go well, fellas. But I love it for my lines. I, I can agree with you on that one. Parker, um, being a Lions fan, we might finally be seeing, I mean, the Bears are still going to be good. The Vikings, we see that they overpaid for Kirk. Uh, the Packers, I think, are going in the wrong direction. So hopefully, you know, knock on wood that the Lions, uh, you know, see an uprise, we can win a couple NFC North division titles there. Hashtag um, one prime. Hashtag one prime. I hear you. I hear you. Next one, though, not next position that got filled, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have officially hired Bruce Arians, uh, the old Arizona Cardinals coach. Um, Arians didn't take a lot of time to kind of fill out his staff there. Um, he has former Jets head coach Todd Bowles joining them, too, as well, to take over the defense. Uh, I think this is kind of a – I'll be honest with you. I think this was the best that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were going to do. Um, I'm not saying it's a home run hire. I do think adding Bowles to the defensive side of the ball, Todd Bowles, defensive-minded guy, and I think he was a great defensive coordinator. I think he's going to be a great defensive coordinator, and if there's a guy that can turn around the Buccaneers' defense and get guys to come play in Tampa Bay, I think it's going to be Todd Bowles. Um, I think he kind of took too much on. He kind of realized that as a head coach that, you know, there was a lot on his plate. Um, So him going back to focusing on defense, I like it. Um, always been, you know, a fan of Bruce Arians. I don't think he's done the best job. Um, never really reached his potential, but I, I think it's the right hire for the Buccaneers. Uh, you know, they're, they're a talented roster, you know, a couple pieces on defense are missing. See if they fulfill that in the draft. But other than that, I, I do think this one was good hire guys. What do you guys got on it? Um, is, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. This is a great hire. Uh, you basically get two head coaches. Um, you know, for people that, uh, Todd Bowles found out when you go coach in that division, you're not going to win any games. I mean, you talk about all the coaches, the Jets, Bills, and, uh, uh, the Dolphins have went through in Belichick's career with the Patriots is crazy. Um, it's just, you're just not going to win games right now with what the, what the Patriots have built over the last 18 years, but Bruce Arians style, it's just not about Bruce Arians having head coach and having some experience with the Cardinals. I mean, his, his scheme for Jameis Winston to be able to chuck the ball around. They got some playmakers at Mike Evans. Uh, I mean, they're going to be, uh, you know, they got OJ Howard. I mean, they're going to be dangerous. Um, if, if him and Jameis can connect, he can kind of keep Jameis out of the media. Uh, so if they can connect, this is dangerous. And then Todd Bowles, you know, he has a great defensive mind. Uh, so to be able to get him like that really quick before anybody else could snatch him up, because a lot of teams probably would have wanted Todd Bowles, their defensive coordinator. So, I mean, you look at that, like, great hire for Tampa Bay, and I kind of look at it and say, man, the Packers got to be looking at this because I really thought if the Packers went after Bruce Arians, that would have been a great hire for them as well. And you just, God, you know, for Tampa Bay, this is great. This is the uh, – Jameis Winston has no more excuses, though. So you got to do it in there. That's coach. He's had quarterbacks between Carson Palmer that were competitive. Uh, I mean, had really good statistics. He's done some things. They've won the playoffs with him. Like – this better, uh, you know, this should work out, I think, in Tampa Bay's favor. They're going to become competitive in that division. Definitely agree with you there, Zach. We got Dr. Pepper. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, I couldn't agree with Zy more, really. Um, I think Bruce Arians, when I saw that, you know, he was starting to look for, you know, coaching jobs, I really, like like he, he, I said like a week ago, Baker Mayfield's going to win a Super Bowl with the Browns. Well, I when I saw, like, the Browns were kind of thinking about him, but they didn't really think about him, I'm like, I want the the Browns to hire Bruce Arians. I don't know if you guys have watched, but I started watching uh, on Prime Video uh, by Amazon. So it's uh they have a series called All or Nothing with the uh, Arizona Cardinals when Arians was a coach there. And I mean, he seems like a great coach. You know, the players love him. I just think he fits great at Tampa. You know, JMS not me. You know, kind of being in some trouble and getting suspended and stuff. I think I'll turn him around and uh. Todd Moles, I don't really know much about him before Jets, you know. He, uh, went, the only thing I know about him is 
and the head coach is about two and forty-one as a head coach. But that's all I can say about him. But yeah, first Arians really like that hire for them, you know. And uh, I just want to just breaking news. I don't know if it's official yet, but my friend, I know this has nothing to do with the NFL. My friend just told me that Michigan hired uh, Hugh Jackson uh, as their new offensive coordinator. That's fake. It's fake. Yeah. No, no, listen to me. Hashtag fake news. All right, money. For you. It's all right though. There, there's a lot of that going around right now. Um, yeah, we're probably gonna see more of it, especially with Michigan. I feel like everyone wants to throw Michigan. So what happens to be the best program in uh, college football? Anybody watching this, please feel free to argue. Um, we we kind of love that. We kind of want that. So uh, if anyone has anything to say about that, let us know here at timeout. Uh, we'd be more than happy to have you on video or. or you know, have you join us too as well. Um, anyways. Yeah, I might have to mic my friend's number that said that. <laughs> saying, like, Let, let's get back to the NFL. I definitely got to check out the show, though. You're talking about Dr. Pepper. Sounds like a good one. Uh, yeah, and they, they got on three teams. Uh, they won then one on the Rams, the Cowboys, and the uh, Cardinals. Good no, show. Sounds like a good one. We could see another Rams, you know, one of the mm-hmm. Sean McVay's prodigies coming off the board too, uh, Rams quarterback coach. Zach Taylor, he's been interviewed for a couple jobs. But let's get into the current hires. Uh, Arizona Cardinals, they have finalized a deal with former head coach at Texas Tech, more formally the offensive coordinator at USC, just kind of signed here recently. And, uh, you know, there was rumors that USC's athletic director wasn't going to allow him to take interviews at the NFL level for head coaching positions. Um, And then, you know, Cliff kind of applied for him. He got interviewed. The Cardinals thought they hit the home run higher with this one. So new Arizona Cardinals coach, um, Cliff Kingsbury. I like the guy. I like him a lot. I think he's a player's coach. Um, You know, I think he did decent at Texas Tech. You know, again, we never really think of, oh, wow, you know, Texas Tech. They're they're the team to beat. You know, they play in the Big 12. Uh, They always put up a ton of points. I think USC hit a home run, hiring him as a OC. I, I was kind of hoping he'd come to Michigan and take over the reins um, as offensive coordinator there because I think his offense is great. Uh, but the big thing is, is I think in the NFL you got to be a players coach. You got to relate a lot to the players. Um, you know, if he can, he, he's a young guy, so he's definitely got to earn the respect of the guys in the locker room first. But I think Cliff could, you know, he could do a pretty good job, especially with the situation that the Cardinals are in and where they're at as a team. I think. You know, there's not a lot. There, there's not a ton of expectations for Coach Kingsbury over at the Cardinals right now. So, I do think Arizona's in a rebuilding process. I think the guy, the guy they wanted, you know, young guy, um, knows what he's doing on the offensive end. You know, the Cardinals struggled a lot this year offensively. Uh, never really got David Johnson going. Um, you know, Rosen never really got going. He never, you know, lived up to the hype that he was supposed to have. So. Hopefully Cliff can come over and change that. Hopefully, you know, he, he rounds out his staff a little bit better than what he did at Texas Tech, hires a good defensive coordinator, because uh, the Cardinals do still have a, a pretty solid defense. But what what's your guys' takes on this one? How the Cardinals do? I got three timeouts for this one. First timeouts to Texas Tech. They got rid of Mike Leach. Terrible job getting rid of that dude, as we've seen in Washington State. And then you get rid of Cliff. And I thought Cliff was the best that you're going to get at Texas Tech. They at least competed in big games. My next time out is on USC for trying to block this guy from getting interviews because he's an offensive coordinator, kind of like what I talked about with Temple in Miami. You know, I mean, I heard somebody say something that uh, made a comparison on one of the shows on ESPN today was if you were a, if you're the French fry maker at, at McDonald's and then they come up and ask you to be the manager at Burger King, you're probably going to go to Burger King. That's just common sense. So, I mean, you know, why would you even try to block? He hasn't even coached for you yet. He's done nothing for you. So let him go. And then the third time I was on the Arizona Cardinals, they went and hired a guy that has never coached in the NFL and has just got fired for not winning enough games at Texas Tech. So I'm not sold on this, and I have a couple reasons. One, you have Josh Rosen, who already thinks he's way better than he is as a quarterback, and so now you're going to bring in somebody probably that is a little too cocky for themselves as a coach. And then two, the Cardinals offense. I mean, I think Cliff is a guy that's going to chuck it around the field all the time. I mean, I just don't know if they have the pieces for that. Um, so if he's going to work, it's going to take a lot of time. Um, I'm really curious to see if this will work out. Personally, I don't think it will work out. I think college was where he belonged. I think his scheme is much better in the college game than it is the pro game. But for Arizona, if you, 
that's a far stretch for me. And I guess they're trying to make a splash young guy. Uh, you know, they're trying to find – what they're trying to find is the next Sean McVay because that's what they're looking at. Um, but I'm not impressed by this hire either. I think could have got a lot better dudes. I mean, personally, I'd rather have hired Marvin Lewis than this guy. Oh, that's tough. I agree with their first two timeouts. I think the last one, not so much. Uh, NFL teams are looking to hire younger. I agree with that. They've seen what Sean McVay's done. Uh, I think, you know, if you're going to hire a younger guy, Cliff was definitely one of the top ones to do it. Um, he's going in. The Cardinals are on the clock right now, you know. So if he, I, I get it. At this moment, there's not a lot of pieces there. But, you know, through the draft with the number one pick, you, you could even trade that. You know, we've seen number one picks be traded in the past, too. So you could definitely trade those picks for talent. You know, the Cardinals are going to have a ton of cap space going into free agency, too, as well, even with Chandler Jones still on the salary and everything like that. So I think uh, I think Cliff's going to do a good job. I got to disagree with you on that third timeout. I think the two were home run hits on your timeout calls, but that third one, man, I I don't know about that one, Coach. I don't know. Dr. Pepper, what do you got about the Cardinals hire? I'm oh, sorry, fellas. I was on uh, wing rate nogs on Twitter. I mean, look at that little guy. Not for any friend. Cardinals job not interesting to you or what? No, um, I think out of the three that we talked about, that's the most interesting because I think it's kind of like the most unsure because I think we figured that Lafleur, it'll be pretty surprising if he's successful, like really successful. First Arians, he you know led the Cardinals to great playoff runs. They had a shot at the Super Bowl, but uh, I don't think they ever got there. But I mean, Cliff Kingsbury, yeah, like I said, when people say like got so mad and stuff about, like, oh, he just got hired at USC and now he's leaving. Like, yeah, like he said about Burger King and McDonald's. You're not just, you can't just hold a guy from, you know, pursuing something he's wanted his, maybe his whole life, you know, to coach for an NFL team. And uh, I also disagree about, like, me and Young. Like, yeah, they're kind of going that way now, I think. And I think, like, yeah, uh, a lot of people are saying, like, Patrick Mahomes, you know, uh, Cliff had uh, Patrick Mahomes at, um, Texas Tech, and they didn't really succeed that well on it. So um, that's where I kind of question, like, he wasn't very successful at Texas Tech, you know, so it's tough for me. I'm kind of like 50-50 if he's going to do good, but I think with a young cornerback, you know, Rosen, if I was Josh Rosen right now, I'd be uh, excited, you know, for the chance to have him uh, lead me under the helm. And uh, But yeah, I mean, I, speaking about USC, I think I'd be more mad about Manny Diaz going to Temple and then taking Miami, you know, I would have been more mad about that than him uh, going to USC and then Arizona, personally. But we'll see. I, I think Arizona's got a long way to go, though. They got, you know, a few years ago, they had they had the pieces to make a neat run, and they did, but they never won at all. But they're far away from it now. It's total rebuild, total rebuild for them. Agreeable, definitely. I, I think those were valid points. Um, so we'll kind of wrap this up. There's a lot of jobs open right now. Um, Broncos, Bengals, Dolphins, Jets, all still jobs that are um, on the table at this point in time. You guys got any, you know, hearing any rumors out there, any rumblings, any predictions on who the coaches, the next coach are going to be for those teams? We got Dodge Pepper. I'm saying the most intriguing out of them all for me is the Cleveland Browns because, like I said, Baker's going to win a Super Bowl. Kind of lead them to a Super Bowl, so that's a. And they gotta hire someone good, you know. This is for Baker Mayfield's future and that franchise's future. They got their quarterback. He's gonna win a ring. It's just they gotta get the right guy at the helm. Who do you, Who do you think that is? I got no clue. I got no clue. I mean, maybe William Ah. Uh, I don't know if there's uh, any. Na- I don't know if there's like. Uh, it's really weird right now you're talking about, but there's not really a big name in the NFL that I can think of. Yeah, really. Uh, you know, probably the best assistant would be Josh McDaniels and him saying he doesn't, you know, he's staying home. But, um, you know, and then you, th- you so you think about it, it's, uh, you know, it could be interesting. But I kind of think that uh, personally that you might see a, uh, a coach or two swap. I could see maybe a coach leaving where he's at right now and go take a different job. Um, but there's just so many jobs open that I don't know who some of these teams are going to hire. You know, the sad part is like Hugh Jackson might get a job um, because he's got coaching experience. And at that, 
at the end of the day, that's more important than what some of these other guys are going to bring to the table. So it's going to be really interesting. Some teams are going to stretch, and then some teams, you know, I mean, I mean, I would say this, like, uh, probably Marvin Lewis is going to get a job too, you know, like, uh, because at the end of the day, if Marvin Lewis is coaching, you're going to be right there at 500 every year. Like, you're going to be competing to make the playoffs. But that uh, where Dr. Pepper says the Browns are the most intriguing team, to me it's the Cincinnati Bengals. And I say this because I think that uh, they have the pieces, they've proven it, that they can compete for the playoffs right away. And so you bring somebody in there that can kind of spark them, maybe make a couple offseason moves, and with, with the Steelers falling apart, the Cincinnati Bengals could go win that division next year. I got I to give you a whole lot of timeouts on this one. Andy Dalton ain't winning in crap. He ain't going to win poop. That's, I'm just breaking it down for you. So, yeah, they got, you know, their wide receivers have proven themselves. They got Joe Mixon, pretty good running back, you know. Mac. Just saying, they're close. We'll what, about, what about you, Trav? Who do you think is the most intriguing uh, job out there right now? You know, I, I, I'm, I'm going to agree with Parker on this one. Man, the Browns are just so young. Uh, they got, you know, a lot of talent there. They got salary caps still remaining. They got, you know, halfway decent draft picks still. They you know that's from the past transactions. Uh, I think Dorsey did a great job managing this team. I think his last piece is, is to hire a coach. And this was going to be my hot topic here is I think somebody's going to try to trade for John Harbaugh this offseason it's going to be a coaching trade i I think we we kind of seen it with arians um you know the cardinals had to send a what was it a six-round pick in order or or the bucks sent a six-round pick to receive arians Mm -hmm. and a seventh-round pick so it's kind of a trade i think we're going to see that with uh harbaugh i I think the two spots that he could possibly go are a the dolphins um mainly because the owner there's a, a he's a michigan man um you know jim's been down there taking a vacation in florida so could have some influence there um i think that could be a big one but i also think the browns are going to be a big one and they have the picks to do it um you know if, if they want to get a home run higher that's the guy to go get you know besides that you're going to start going down the hill um you know like you said zy there's not really like a home run higher left out there in my eyes uh, i think the broncos they're kind of zero in on uh the steelers offensive coordinator munchak uh, Fangio, the Bears, I know they interviewed him too. That was one of the finalists. Um, the Bengals were looking at hiring Freddie Kitchens, the offense coordinator, old Browns offense coordinator. Um, Dolphins, I think, you know, if they lose out on Harbaugh, I think they're going to get the old Lions coach, uh, Jim Caldwell. And, and I, I think that wouldn't be a terrible hiring, Caldwell, but he's got to be at the right place, you know. Like, I liked him in Detroit, but. I did too. He was a good players coach. I think he could. Um, excel in the right atmosphere, right situation. Miami might be that for him. And then the Jets, I think the Jets get, you know, the last cream of the crowd. You know, they get the last pick. So whether – I I'm forgot him out, honestly. If the yeah. Jets get Mike McCarthy, that's a good hire for them. Uh, yeah. That's what I was going to say. That's what I was going to say. And McCarthy's kind of expressed his interest in the Jets. Um, you talk about guys like Marvin Lewis and, and Hugh Jackson, I think, could be – um, a Jets coach or even a Broncos coach too. So we'll we'll see how it all unfolds. Uh, I know John Elway; he's been flying all over the United States trying to find a head coach over there. Um, but I do think the Broncos is the most intriguing to me, and I think that you know with the way the Raven the Raven state is, with there still being a couple guys, you know, like Marvin Lewis out there, uh, Hugh Jackson. If you trade away John Harbaugh and get a second or third round pick for him, even even the first round pick, and they swap seconds. Uh, you know, that's, that's a big get for A, the Browns, but it could be a big get for the Ravens, too, to continue that young rebuilding process. We know Flacco's not coming back, uh, but we'll see. There, there's definitely a lot of offseason left. Uh, a lot of interesting things could happen. We hope everybody that's listening tonight um, continues to join us. But you guys got anything else for everybody? Uh, if I, I, I dropped my Dr. Pepper on him in my hand right now. but uh, Listen, if anybody's listening from Dr. Pepper out there, we got to get uh, Parker out here, the Dr. Pepper sponsorship. But uh, thank yeah. you for joining the timeout team tonight. Coach Zai, Dr. Pepper, and myself, Big Trav. Uh, we appreciate it. Um, you know, again, if you have anything, any comments, uh, want to interact with us, definitely follow us on all social media. All of our podcasts are on Podbean. 
Uh, we're on YouTube as well. Most of our handles are well, at Woe Timeout. Uh, so give us a follow, subscribe to us, you know, whatever it is, interact with us. We'd love to hear it. But thank you from, from the group here at Time Out, even the guys that are missing tonight. We love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. See ya. See ya, boys.